give a big hand, all six of you, four ten. When you're preparing a speech, you're getting it ready in your mind, in your head, that becomes your whole world. That's all you're thinking about. You're thinking about what you're going to talk about, what order you're going to get, and everything kind of focuses in on that speech. You can kind of assess about it. You know what I'm talking about, David? Can I get in on that speech? And that's where I was. Now, in Telesmatch, we don't do that here uh, so much, but as uh, Wayne can tell you, Telesmatch has a 10-step program, kind of like Alcoholics Anonymous, and they step you through these 10 different uh, techniques, speaking techniques. So I was going through the book, and the first thing is called the icebreaker. You heard anything? Somebody referred to that before. Uh, is it John? Yeah, John was referring to the icebreaker. The icebreaker. said, so, okay, the icebreaker, and you've got to so kind of break in the ice and talking. So it's going through and figuring, okay, what am I going to talk about? Started obsessing about that, thinking, well, what am I going to talk about? How am I going to do it? And I got everything just perfect. I got everything just perfect, just right. It was kind of a, uh, of a legend in my own mind. You know how that works? You just get everything right, you just picture it, and you picture yourself on the stage, and everything's wonderful, and everybody loves what you're doing, and everything just goes fantastically well. Well, that's where I was. And then I gave my speech. And as you know in Toastmasters, and even here, you give a speech, you get an evaluation. And then you find out about the evaluation a little bit. So I gave my speech, and afterwards I got an evaluation from a kind of a big guy. He said, well, Tim, my uh, speech was good, yeah, but you um, need a little more vocal variety. You need to move around on stage a little bit more, and uh, I just didn't buy it. It didn't sound authentic to me. So I thought, OK, well, it's good feedback. What the heck is authentic? But I mean, vocal variety, you know what that is. You know, making more of my vocals, making more of my sounds, that's the whole point. And moving on stage, it's true. I just stayed in one position. You've got to move on stage. That made sense. I thought, okay, that's good feedback. I can work with that. I can do something with that. Now, since that was the first technique, breaking the ice, I went on the next one, I think it was organize your speech, whatever it's called. Wayne can back me up on that. And I thought, okay, well, new technique, new speech. So I started creating a new speech. Figuring out the same thing, but I wanted to have some vocal variety. I wanted to have moving around on stage. I wanted to have some sort of authentic technique, some sort of character. And I started thinking about, well, how can I move around on stage and have some sort of a, of a character, and, and what way should I do? And I thought, well, a sudden action is easy, right? That's simple enough to do. And moving around and say, well, drunk people move around on stage a lot. And I started thinking, well, what if I do a drunk southern character kind of staggering around, like a drunken foghorn leghorn, I thought. That would be, that would be ideal, just the perfect thing to do. So I started giving my speech, and it got a little bit slurry, and I just started staggering around on stage back and forth. I don't remember exactly what I had to say, but I'm sure it was offensive. Just about everybody out there in the audience just wanted to be authentic, you know, all the way through. And when I finished the whole thing, I thought, okay, I did it. I staggered back on stage. And then I got another guy came up, the evaluator, and he was kind of a, kind of a more thinner guy and very quiet. He said, well, maybe there's such a thing as too much vocal variety and too much stage movement. And it just seemed like you were just, I don't know, all over the place up there. And it just, I didn't buy the accent. It didn't make any sense to me. It didn't work for me. So I thought, okay, it's not vocal variety. Moving around the stage, authentic. Where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, that's right. That's what that, that guy just said. I think, okay, but it's ridiculous. I'm not getting better. I mean, I did the same speech at New Speed, and I get the same evaluation. What's going on here? So at this time, I'm going to nail it. So I, I was going to do my third project, whole new project, whole new speech. But this time I thought, okay, it's the right amount of vocal variety and the right amount of moving around the stage and the right amount of authenticness. Everything had all come together. So I gave the speech. I don't remember what I talked about or what I did, what I said. I finished the whole thing. There are three comments. And you probably can guess what they were. Vocal variety, moving around the stage, and being authentic. I thought, it's ridiculous. It's a waste of my time. Why am I even up here if I'm going to do three different speeches and do the same sort of evaluation? So I did what you always should do if you want to become a better speaker. I just stopped speaking. I just said, forget it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, not going to speak anymore. Well, I had been speaking, you know, three speeches. And so the guy who was the Toastmaster, the, the kind of left the club, Rocky Romero, a medium-sized guy, really no speaking, professional speaker. He 
I said, Tim, I, you know, why aren't you speaking? He said, well, Rocky, I, I'm not getting any better. He said, well, Tim, you keep doing a new speech each time. He said, well, not what you're supposed to do. I said, no, Tim, speaking is re-speak. Speaking is re-speak. And he explained a little bit more about this. There's this idea that every time you go up there, you should do a new speech. Because, you know, you get bored. You focus on that one speech, and then you do a new speech. You get that. So keep that interest in the speech all the way through. But actually, the problem is if you do that, you learn what to do for one speech. You get all sorts of feedback on that speech. And you do a new speech, your feedback doesn't apply anymore. And you got to do something. You know what I'm talking about, Dan. All of a sudden, you're doing something new. And then you're doing something else. you got to do a new one. You just keep rebuilding the same thing and making the same mistakes over and over again. So instead, you want to re-speak. Give a speech. Give the same speech again. Give the same speech again. And that will help you build, develop, and grow your skills. So I started doing that. It didn't happen all right away. But by speaking and re-speaking, gradually got better. Yeah, I'd heard the same thing about the comments, but I knew the comments were about something I could fix. I just kept working on that speech, it would get better. And it did get better and better and better. It started out by getting worse, but then it got better and better. As you start doing this, you start re-speaking and redoing your speeches, you discover them getting better and better. John's given that speech a couple of times before I've heard it. Each time it gets a little bit more, he adds some different things, different edges to it. David, that's like the third or fourth time I know you've given that speech that he's done before. And by doing it and having the speech ready, and be certain about it, you can then, when the situation comes up to speak, you can speak. Because the only way you come better at speaking is actually by speaking. And the best way to come better at speaking is you have something ready, you prepared, Ready about, you thought about, ready to go. So when the opportunity comes up to speak, you can take advantage of it, get into there, and speak it in front of people. So you really want to become a better speaker. You want to work at it, develop at it. You've got to start speaking first. But once you start speaking, remember, speaking is re speak. All right. Thank you, Ted.